Welcome to Youth Advisory Boards, one of the student voice trainings under the Kern Student Voice HIP grant. The audio today is by Allison Baptiste, myself, and I am a staff member of the Kern County Foster Youth Services and Homeless Education Coordinating Program, which is a part of Kern County Superintendent of Schools. So what is a YAB or Y-A-B? A youth advisory board, or a YAB, is a formal student group that provides feedback for changes that need to happen on school campuses to better serve other students. YABs are best utilized when all members are part of a subpopulation of students, such as all members being homeless students, who can provide feedback on their real lived experiences in order to help make systemic change. And it's very important to know that YABs need committed adult allies to help support the work. Many people will confuse a YAB with a student council or student government. They are two completely different entities and they both have reasons why they are different than each other. And they are important in their own regards, but they are different. So what's important to know is that YABs provide ongoing advice and support to school districts on policies and practices that affect students. YABs are typically focused on one student subgroup that often goes unheard, like homeless students. So, for example, a, a youth advisory board will be comprised of all McKinney Vento students who provide feedback on policies and practices that affect their school education. A student council is different because student councils are student representatives often elected by their peers to address school issues and plan school events or activities. And student council representatives are frequently more what we term quote unquote, the popular youth at their schools, and they're often not diversely represented. So many student councils or student government councils will not include homeless students or will not include students with other extreme adversities because they might not be, quote unquote, popular enough to be voted in by other students. When you're thinking about starting a YAB or Youth Advisory Board, these are some rules that you need to follow. Number one, know the purpose. What is the mission of the YAB? What are the intended outcomes? If you don't know why you're creating a YAB, then how are you going to know who to recruit for the YAB, what the YAB should be focused on, etc.? Many YABs will be comprised of homeless youth with who are and the mission of them meeting together is to provide feedback to school administrators or district administrators regarding practices and policies that are not helpful for them as homeless students. Or they'll provide some kind of feedback regarding uh, ideas that they have to improve their experience as a homeless student on a campus. It's very, very important to make sure that you avoid tokenism when starting a YAB. If you're creating a YAB just to make it appear like youth are involved in decision-making processes on your campus or in your district, that is not okay. In order to have a YAB effective and not fall under tokenism, the feedback provided by the YAB truly needs to be listened to by administrators and school personnel, and the feedback loop needs to be closed, closed with them. YABs are meant to incorporate authentic youth voice. And what's important about the word authentic is to know that sometimes a youth voice may go against some of the adult voices in the room. The youth who are involved in the youth advisory board may have different ideas on what's equitable or what will work for them on their campus than the adults have. And in order to make sure that their voices remain authentic, you need to allow them to provide that kind of feedback and be able to hear it as an adult or school administrator. Another rule for starting a YAB is to make it youth lab. So allow the YAB to work on topics they believe are important. You do not want to tell a YAB, well, you can only talk about topics related to the school lunch, for example. We only really want to hear about what you like from the cafeteria and what you don't. And then we're going to take that and put it in a report and say that we're incorporating student feedback into our processes. That is not making it youth-led, and that's also really not making 
it incorporate authentic youth voice. So if the YAB members or the YAB members want to discuss a topic such as something a little bit more serious, such as how hard it is for them to get to school, what barriers are up for them to continue attending school, what teachers and administrators have made easy for them and what have they've made hard for them. You also want to make sure that you're creating safe spaces for them to discuss these topics. So you need to make sure that during YAB meetings, the YAB members have that type of safe space. You do not want YAB members to be having a meeting in the middle of the cafeteria, for example, with tons of other student groups around. They need to have a safe space where they feel like they can speak openly and without judgment. You also have to make sure that you're providing leadership opportunities for YAB members. If we're asking YAB members to provide feedback, we also need to be helping transition them into being little leaders in themselves. Provide leadership development trainings. Help them build their leadership development skills. Help them build their public speaking skills, et cetera. And then another rule for starting a YAB is to make sure you keep it diverse. So even if your YAB is only going to be comprised of homeless students so that those homeless students can provide feedback on policies and procedures that are working or not working for them, you still need to make sure it's diverse within that group of students. So make sure that YABs are open to youth of all gender identities, ethnicities, races, and more. This allows for more authentic feedback on processes that affect even more vulnerable student groups. Our McKinney Vento students are already a very vulnerable student group, but there's subcategories of our homeless students, such as those that are BIPOC, that are LGBTQ+, et cetera, and we need to make sure that we're also hearing from them. On the www.kern.org slash HIP website, where this training is also listed, under the tab Youth Advisory Boards, there is a handout called Steps for Creating a Youth Advisory Board. I highly recommend that you download that handout in order to help you initiate the process of creating your own Youth Advisory Board. It'll walk you step by step through different processes you should take when thinking and planning and implementing a Youth Advisory Board. When you are creating a Youth Advisory Board, it's very important to make sure that you're utilizing the YAB best practices, which are listed on this slide. When we are asking youth with lived experience to provide any kind of feedback for us, we need to provide them fair compensation. If you can't provide them some kind of compensation by way of monies, then it would be recommended to to at least provide them some other types of incentives for participation. And then it, it's very critical when you're conducting a YAB to make sure that meetings are scheduled when the youth are available. You do not wanna be hindering their work or school hours. Many of our YAB members may rely on bus transportation to get to and from their, where they're staying at that moment. And we also want to make sure that we are not um, pulling them out of class or work when we don't need to be. Other barriers you also need to work on removing. So maybe some of the YAB members have children and they need assistance with childcare. Or if you're going to hold YAB meetings after school and the youth rely on bus transportation, then find them another means of transportation to get home afterwards, but also make sure that that transportation is safe. And then finally, again, I'm going to reiterate that you need to ensure that student voice is authentically heard and that YAB work is not adult driven. If you're having YAB meetings and everything is focused on what the adult believes, the adult advisor believes is what should be talked about, and that adult advisor frequently cuts off students and states that they cannot say certain things, then that work is being adult driven. It is not student voice being authentically heard. So I discussed this a little bit. There's going to be students that have difficulty attending meetings. It's going to happen. Even if you try to remove all the barriers you can, 
there are just going to be some homeless students that may have issues attending YAB meetings due to differences in class, transportation schedules, or a multitude of other issues. Some things that you can do to try to prevent this would be to ask staff to give lunch passes to YAB members to get their lunch earlier and therefore get to the meeting sooner if the meeting is at lunchtime. You, if the meeting is at lunchtime, stagger the meetings for different lunch periods. So you may have to have multiple YAB meetings if you are on a campus that has staggered lunch and you're deciding to do YAB at lunchtime. It's very important that you as the adult supporter or advisor work with the school administrators to gain support for YAB and the time required for students to participate. If school administrators are willing to even have a period created for advisory, youth advisory board for them to attend during an actual period, that is the best case scenario. However, we know that that's not practical on a lot of campuses. So at least make sure that school administrators know what YAB is and are, support, are supporting YAB so that students do have the time to participate. You can also create subcommittees of YAB to help complete smaller projects. So for example, maybe YAB wants to give outreach bags to homeless youth in the community, um, or they want to create a food pantry, et cetera, and that's one of the smaller projects they want to work on. You can create subcommittees where that subcommittee only works on that specific project and make sure that those subcommittees meet outside of regular YAB meeting times. So those that cannot attend regular YAB meetings can still be a part of YAB by getting involved in some of the subcommittees. And for the students who are truly unable to attend any YAB meeting, then you can also provide surveys to them to, so that they at least can fill out the survey and have their input known. Um, by other YAB members. What's really important about this, though, is if you are providing a survey to a homeless student and it's being provided to YAB, YAB as a group needs to review all the survey responses and discuss what, if any, of those feedback responses they're going to utilize in YAB. And then someone needs to close the feedback loop with that student that did the survey and let them know what YAB is or is not going to do as a reflection of their survey response. Now, when you cannot pay a stipend, even though that is definitely best practice is to pay our youth for their time, because professionals get paid for their time, there are other creative incentives you can utilize. So, for example, one thing that will attract some YAB members would be to speak with their teachers about the YAB members actually receiving extra credit for being involved with YAB. You can also connect students with leadership opportunities and local leaders. So if you wanted to bring in the mayor, for example, to meet them and talk to them about how to become a mayor eventually or how to become a leader, those are extra incentives that YAB members can get. You should either offer to write letters of recommendation or get administrators to write letters of recommendation for YAB students in particular high school YAB students. Many of these high school YAB students may not have had access to a lot of other types of people in the community that could write them letters of recommendation for college or job applications. But you as a YAB advisor could decide to write a letter of recommendation or have uh, the principal or the superintendent write a letter of recommendation for them to help them get into college or uh, help them get a job that they're interested in. If you're going to be inviting YAB members during lunchtime, it's really recommended to give them lunch. Um, we need to make sure that our homeless youth are eating on campus, are eating during the school day anyways, because they may not have access to a lot of food outside of school. So if you're going to be doing that, please offer lunch to them. And then you can also incentivize some students to explain to them that by, by being a member of YAB, they can recommend changes on their campus and actually see their feedback come to life. Of course, what's important about this is that 
is that the adult supporters need to make sure that they are truly invested in closing the feedback loop and getting back to the YAB members about the feedback that's being utilized. Another creative incentive, which can be utilized as well, is to provide raffle tickets for meeting attendance and do a giveaway at the end of every semester. So for example, you could give a ticket to each YAB member that attends each meeting. And at the end of the semester, if you have a, a really great giveaway item like a bike or a laptop or AirPods, then you could put all the raffle tickets in and one person will win that. YABs can be used for all age ranges. So YABs are great for all middle and high schools um, because it do, they do allow a difference in what student councils allow for, as I talked about earlier. YABs allow for students who are not usually heard, quote unquote, heard by administrators like homeless students to provide feedback and insight for policy and procedural changes. Now, some of you may have heard of youth action boards or youth advisory boards in the past because of HUD. So HUD or Housing and Urban Development does also recognize youth advisory boards for community COCs or continuums of care. Continuums of care are generally comprised of multiple homeless organizations within a community who get federal funds to work on or implement homeless assistance housing projects. So HUD defines YABs as the following. Having at least three youth with voting power on policy decisions of the COC, particularly on policies that relate to preventing and ending youth homelessness, and be comprised of youth age 24 and younger, with at least two-thirds of whom being homeless or formerly homeless. So a YAB at a middle or high school is going to have a different, slightly different focus and slightly different role than a HUD-defined YAB. A HUD-defined YAB is generally those who are transitional age youth, usually around 16 to 24 years old is who will be in a HUD-defined YAB. And those youth are, are youth with lived experience of homelessness who are providing feedback to the COC or the city or the county on larger scale projects related to homeless youth funding and homeless youth projects. But YABs at a middle or high school level are going to be youth with, live, with students with lived experience of homelessness that are going to pro be providing feedback and insight for policy changes to school or district administrators. Because the idea of a middle or high school YAB is to change, is to make systemic change within the school or the, or the district to make it better for homeless students, where the focus of a HUD-defined YAB is really to make systemic change at a city and county level for homeless youth. If you're gonna be creating a YAB on a middle or high school campus, you do wanna look at a selection process. How do you decide who's in your YAB? So the first thing you need to decide as an adult supporter is, are you going to allow students to apply to be a member of the YAB, or are you going to choose it as students based on staff referrals? You can do either. So you can either make it open and let students know that if they are a McKinney Vento student, for example, they can submit an application to be a YAB member. Some schools may may move may not want to take this approach because then other students will be aware that YAB is comprised of McKinney Vento youth. Where if you only take YAB members in based on staff referrals, then you can advertise that YAB is actually more of a leadership or, or um, policy review committee that students were specifically selected for because of their leadership skills or how intelligent they are, et cetera. So other students won't know that YAB members are McKinney-Vento students. Now you also wanna make sure that students, uh, you wanna decide if you want students to only be in YAB if they have meet certain criteria. For example, if they have a 2.0 GPA or higher. 
Now it's understandable why we would want to set a criteria like this to make sure that our students who have maybe low, very low GPAs are not missing instructional time, for example. But you do want to keep in mind that you should be hearing from students at all different academic levels. So it is actually helpful to have homeless students with high and low GPAs on the board so that they can provide, they can both provide feedback on their own experiences. It's also recommended that if you have, if you've received, for example, a referral for a student, a homeless student, that you then touch base with the McKinney-Vento liaison or counselor before inviting that youth to be a member of YAB to see if that youth is in a correct mindset to be a member of YAB. So an example here is, for example, if a student is missing 90% of school days, it may not be the best time for the youth to join YAB. They may need to focus on more of an intervention first. But on the flip side of that, YAB could also benefit that same youth who's missing 90% of school days because maybe they'll be more engaged with school. So that's really a one on, that's a scenario by scenario or case by case situation that you want to talk out with your McKinney Vento liaison. And then it's very important to make sure that not only are the YAB members within the room feeling like they have a safe space to speak, the space also needs to be physically safe for them. So make sure that if you are comprising a group together of youth with extreme adversity, you make sure that the youth joining don't pose some kind of physical threat to one another. So because homeless students are often preyed upon by um, as vulnerable youth, so maybe they would be preyed upon by gangs or other dangerous groups, it's possible you could have two potential YAB members who are in rival gangs. Now, you need to clarify that ahead of time and not put two youth in a room together who would be a physical threat to one another. And then, lastly, you need to obtain permission slips from parents for the youth to join YAB or you would use whatever process your school site typically would for youth to join a type of club. It's very important to make sure that you establish rules with a YAB, especially at the middle and high school levels. So at the very first YAB meeting you have, review with the youth what a YAB is. At the beginning of the meeting, if you've reviewed what a YAB is and the youth are not interested, allow them to opt out and leave. If it's not something they feel comfortable being a part of or want to be a part of, YAB should be an experience that they want to be a part of. They should not feel forced to be a part of. Then after reviewing what YAB is, you want to create a baseline, a baseline rules for all who remain. One of the most critical rules is that of confidentiality. Youth need to feel like they're in a safe space. And youth are unable to keep the housing status of other youth to themselves and not spread rumors about those other youth should not be in YAB. A YAB member should not have to worry that another YAB member is going to go to other kids on campus or other students on campus and state that they're in a shelter or they're living in a car, etc. YAB should always be a safe space. But it's also important, an important caveat to note that adult allies or adult advisors do need to explain to these youth that they are mandated reporters and have a legal obligation to report if a student discloses child abuse or neglect. Adult allies should also reflect that YAB is not a therapy group, but that youth are free to share their experiences as they choose to. Other types of rules that the youth should put together together should be rules based on attendance and behavioral expectations. If you do not set this in place at the beginning, you will run into some issues. So one potential rule could be something along the lines of, you must attend at least 50% of YAB me meetings in order to remain in YAB. Another point would be to revisit the rules every few months and update with what the youth need. The YAB members should ultimately determine which rules they want for their meetings, and revisiting rules uh, periodically is very important to that. 
And then lastly, make sure you create a mission and vision statement with the students. The mission and vision statements can be used to bring students back to the purpose of YAB when the group takes different directions. So for example, if your mission statement has to do with providing policy and procedural feedback to administrators, but the YAB meetings continue to discuss issues they're seeing at a local community center, for example, you may want them to revisit their mission and vision statement to remember that their focus, they can talk about those issues, but really their focus is looking at policy, policy feedback on a school campus. If you go to the www.kern.org slash HIP website under the Youth Advisory Board tab, you can also see an example YAB mission vision statement and example YAB rules. In Kern County, where we are located, we have the Bakersfield Kern Regional Homeless Collaborative YAB. The Bakersfield Kern Regional Homeless Collaborative is the COC in Kern County. And so this YAB, as I explained, because it's a HUD defined YAB or a COC YAB, it is comprised of 18 to 24 year olds with lived experience of homelessness. So they will have a little bit of a different focus, but you can still take their mission statement, vision statement and rules as an example of how to create rules at middle and high school levels. Now, I just explained that the BKRHC or Bakersfield Kern Regional Homeless Collaboratives, YAB, is Kern County's HUD defined YAB. With that being said, the Kern YAB, the BKRHC YAB has done a ton of different projects. Now it's important to take a look at some of these projects because some of them are outside of the realm of what a middle or high school YAB would be focused on. However, some of them can give ideas to you about what types of projects even a middle and high school YAB can do. So some of the projects the YAB have completed are as follows. They've met with local organization CEOs to provide feedback on services for homeless youth in Kern. They've written letters to local food banks and emergency shelters in Kern County on how to improve services for homeless youth. They do media interviews and they have done press releases on the impacts of homelessness on youth and ways to help. They put together outreach bags for organizations to hand out to homeless youth. In the top right of the screen, you can see that they created a tips for surviving the streets card for homeless youth. It's about the size of a business card folded up and can go in their wallet. And it provides very quick facts that a youth can pull out and see where they could get Wi-Fi, where they could get a shower, where they could stay at a shelter. And the other side of the card also discusses just tips on how to survive. They've presented to the City Council and Board of Supervisors on items such as Homeless Youth Awareness Month. They've assisted in writing federal grants for homeless youth funds. They created the Through Our Eyes Photojournalism Project, which is a student voice photojournalism project. If you are interested in learning more about how to do a student voice multimedia project, check out the www.kern.org slash HIP website under Student Voice on Multimedia and check out the trainings there. They also created the Shining a Light on Youth Homelessness Fact Sheet for service providers or educators to utilize. You can see that on the bottom right of the screen. They as a whole came up with this one page sheet that talks about how educators or service providers can recognize who a homeless youth is, strategies for approaching them, and also it has some local statistics on the page and some verbiage or words to describe how homeless youth feel. And they created this all on their own. Now I will share here a the Through Our Eyes photojournalism project that is also available to watch on YouTube if you choose to. During this 
photojournalism project, the BKRHC YAB decided to take photos of themselves and other homeless youth in locations that they have lived or locations where they survived and attached verbiage to this message in order for people to understand what it is like being a homeless youth. So I will share this now. Now, that photojournalism project, like I said, was created by the COC's Youth Action Board, but that is a type of student voice project that a youth advisory board at a middle or high school level could work on. They could choose to do a photojournalism project based on topics or prompts such as what I wish my teachers knew about me as a homeless student or what I want the district to know about our campus, et cetera. Now, after looking at some example projects that a YAB could work on, it's also very, very important to recognize that YABs need adult allies or advisors. So on the screen, you can see um, this flow chart that was created by uh, researcher P Petro QB in 2014. And basically what it explains is that if you have youth and adult partnerships, those can help provide thriving youth programs and communities. So youth contributions and adult contributions are very, both very important. And you wanna take both, put that into collective action, and then you will have thriving youth and thriving programs and thriving communities. It's very important that YAB advisors need to be true adult allies who care about student voice work. Please do not make a YAB adult advisor someone that is not interested or does not really care about this mission. Just assigning someone to this role when that person does not really care about the mission is not going to be helpful for YAB and can actually be traumatic for some of the youth involved. It's important regarding youth adult partnerships that you are intentional about the decision making power that youth have. You acknowledge that youth are the experts of their own truth. And when asking youth to be involved in any work, that you honor their experiences, allowing their experiences and ideas to inform the process. Now, what's very, very critical is to make sure that you're looking out for adultism. Adultism is driven by behaviors and attitudes that are based on the assumption that adults are better than young people and therefore entitles them to act upon or on behalf of young people without their agreement. Unfortunately, we fall under this category accidentally sometimes, not realizing that we feel like our ideas are better than the ideas of the youth. Youth adult partnerships are critical in making systemic change. However, YABs are youth run and youth focused. It's important to know that YAB members do not have to always agree with the ideas of the adult allies in order to make their own recommendations. 
As an adult advisor, your role is to provide leadership development experience and facilitate these discussions for the youth. It is not to tell the youth what their feedback or recommendations should be. Now, here's your adult ally or advisor obligations. Adult YAB advisors are responsible for ensuring that YAB is a safe place for youth. The YAB policy recommendations are heard by administrators and that YAB members get leadership development opportunities and are not exploited. YAB advisors need to be adult allies who really, really care about the work. Please don't force anyone to be a YAB advisor that's not interested. And YAB advisors are responsible for connecting administrators, connecting with administrators to determine the best way for policy recommendations to be provided. If you're wondering, well, what kind of leadership development can I provide a YAB member? Here's some examples. You can always bring in local leaders to their meetings, such as the mayor, the superintendent, nonprofit leaders, private business owners, et cetera to speak with the YAB members about how they got to where they are. The, the YAB members or the youth can also provide feedback to these local leaders on service improvements that could be made that the leader has some effect over. Give trainings to the youth on how to network, what is LinkedIn, how to speak publicly, etc. Invite youth to trainings with other professionals on public speaking, advocacy, leadership skills, media interviews, and more. Have the YAB members create a vision board and future goals for themselves, and then help connect them to other professionals in the field they're interested in for them to shadow. Try to bring YAB members to conferences with you. Also, when you're bringing them to a conference, that's a great time to be able to teach them what appropriate work or conference attire is and how to network with other professionals. And then once youth have really had some of this other leadership development, invite them to speak publicly at events or on the media about YAB related topics. But please do not have them speak publicly at events or on the media until they have had proper leadership skill training and public speaking training. Now, that is my face on the right. <laughs> um, I am one of the YAB advisors for the BKRHC YAB. So these are some lessons that I have learned. I have done that role now for about four years. And over that period of time, I have learned um, different types of lessons that may be helpful for you. So one of the lessons I learned was to frequently look for funding opportunities. You want to be able to pay for incentives for the youth, field trips for the youth, projects, equipment for projects, lunches, and more. Continue to look for mini grants that the YAB can apply to to assist with their mission. So for example, in Kern, there is one agency that yearly will provide a very small mini grant of a couple thousand dollars to organizations that are going to better the community. And so our BKRHC YAB has applied for these funds and received it multiple times. And they've been able to create homeless outreach bags for homeless youth in the community with those funds. And then the YAB as a whole decides what should go in the bags, puts the bags together and distributes them. It's very important to know that YAB members will all have very different personalities, perspectives and backgrounds, even if they all share homelessness as a common factor. So with that being said, anytime you put a group of youth in a room, there, there may be a youth that offends another youth. There may be someone that says or does things that another youth doesn't agree with. And it's critical as an advisor to keep the YAB meeting a safe space for everyone. If a YAB member is not meeting the rules or the expectations established to create it a safe space, then you do need to look at exiting that person as a YAB member to keep the YAB meeting safe for the rest of the members involved. Now, you want to be careful and um, publicly share that YAB is a group of youth who recommend policy decisions and were selected for YAB due to their leadership abilities. You shouldn't be publicly sharing that YAB is comprised of homeless youth in order not to out them to their peers. 
So you can very easily say that YAB is a selection, uh, is comprised of a selection of students who are, you know, uh, specifically selected due to their leadership abilities or their innovative thoughts, et cetera, without having to say that they're all homeless students. And then as a YAB advisor, I know that this can be really difficult, but you need to learn how to take a back seat. You're not leading the discussions, you're facilitating them. So, and also realize that sometimes YAB recommendations may not align with your personal opinions, but your role as an advisor is to help the YAB members determine what their recommendations and feedback are, and you help them facilitate those discussions. And then probably most importantly is to celebrate the successes of the YAB and individual members. Openly share with them as an advisor how proud you are of them and their hard work. Support them in their lives. Ask them if there's anything you can assist with. If you have a YAB member who just had a baby, for example, give them some diapers. Tell them how beautiful their baby looks, etc. Because you want to show that you truly care about the YAB members as people. That will help engage them in school and will help the school climate. Now, our BKRHC YAB chair has also created a lessons learned from a YAB chair that you can access on www.kern.org slash HIP website. Thank you for attending this training. If you need more individual coaching on using youth with lived experience for professional development trainings, or if you need more individual coaching on creating a youth action board, please email fostered at kern.org. Also check out the www.kern.org slash hip website for a guidebook and toolkit of multiple other student voice trainings. Thank you.